This is going to be the most fun cholesterol explanation that you've probably ever had. All right, so as this video goes on, you're going to have an understanding of the different kinds of HDL in a fun way, a little bit about LDL, but most importantly, what you want to know, how you can increase specific forms of HDL that are going to ultimately lead to the best ultimate health. So we'll cover all the bases. But let's go ahead and let's dive in with something really, really kind of funny. And I got to give some credit to a buddy of mine, Nick Norwitz, over at Oxford University because he helped me out with this analogy and it's awesome. All right, so when we look at HDL and LDL, we have a tendency to just view them as two simple things. One HDL, one LDL. The reality is there's a very diverse profile of both. So let's have fun with this analogy really quick. I want you to imagine for a second that you know a mother that has five children, okay? And this mother named her first four kids all Henry. The first kid was Henry, second kid was Henry, third kid was Henry, fourth kid was Henry. Finally, when she was pregnant with the fifth, a friend came up to her and said, you know, maybe you should name the fifth kid something different. So she named the fifth kid Lewis. Now, here's the thing. If you were to casually talk to this mom about her kids, she would say, Henry and Lewis. And you would assume that she only has two kids. Well, that's the same assumption that most doctors make. That's the same assumption that most researchers make. That's the same assumption that most just lay people make, that there's only two kids, right? HDL and LDL. But in reality, she has four HDLs and one LDL. Actually, even more LDLs than that if you want to get complicated. The point is, is that this is how we need to shift, okay? We can't just look at it as one piece. There are multiple forms of HDLs, just like there's multiple forms of Henry, right? So let's take this analogy a little bit further so we can have some fun with this, okay? So Henry, Henry one, has done amazing things. They're all great kids. The, all four of the Henrys are tremendous kids. So Henry one is doing amazing things by being a, just a tremendous athlete that's setting examples for young children. Then Henry two, maybe he's good at art and he's inspiring people to be creative. The point is, all four Henrys are doing amazing things. And this represents HDL cholesterol, right? HDL is good, there's no denying that. But they do multiple things. Like some forms of HDL help with reverse cholesterol transport, bringing LDL back to the liver. Some, believe it or not, have huge anti-inflammatory properties. Others have huge antioxidant properties. And then some HDLs help with platelet formation, some help with insulin secretion. The point is, HDLs do a heck of a lot more than just being the good cholesterol. They do lots of different things, okay? So again, we classify them into one group, but there's a lot of them. Now we can measure HDL via different things. Their size, their, their charge ratio, their fluffiness. They do so many things. And here's a fun fact. If you go to the doctor and you ask them to give you a cholesterol test we're reading, and you ask them to do subfractionation, you'll be able to see what this looks like. It'll show you a breakdown. Like if you look at the little image that's on the screen, that's a little bit more what it looks like, right? That's like, it's gonna show you large particles, small particles, it's gonna show you where your actual fractionation is so you have an idea, okay? Now, the question is, which cholesterol is going to be best? Which form of HDL is going to be best? Well, again, that all depends on what you're after. Most experts agree that a diverse profile of HDL is the best because then you're getting the benefit of different things. One HDL being antioxidant, one HDL being cholesterol transport, one HDL being insulin, right? Okay, so we want a diverse profile. However, I will say for the sake of this video, most of the research out there is talking about large particle HDL, which has been strongly associated with strong cardiovascular improvements. So we wanna focus a little bit more on that. Now, before I talk about the foods that you should consume, I do need to talk about LDL for just a minute. Okay, LDL, or that fifth child, Lewis, he was kind of a, um, he's a good guy, but he was a terrible child. And what that represents is that when LDL is small, it's bad. It's like terrible twos, just a pain in the butt. Can't deal with them, it's actually bad. Small particle LDL is bad. Large particle LDL, grown up Lewis, turned into a pretty good kid. Okay, so the point here is that the same kind of thing with this subfractionation. When you get your tests done, you can see, do I have lots of small particle or lots of big particle? It's really important that you know this stuff because you have to educate yourself. If you don't know what's inside your body from a lab perspective, how can you expect someone that doesn't know you, like a doctor, to really be able to point things out? So let's jump over and let's talk about which foods are gonna improve your HDL. That's what we really want. And the cool thing is, just FYI, I know some of you, uh, you know, don't like this, but let's be honest, it has to happen. I put a link down below for Thrive Market and I've been able to assemble what I consider the healthiest foods for a higher fat diet, okay? So it's an online grocery store. So basically it makes it so like you can go grocery shopping with me. So Thrive is an online membership-based grocery store and I have different keto boxes, fasting boxes. 
The point is, you can get groceries, you can get high quality snack foods, high quality meals, and everything that you need to create just a good healthy lifestyle. But special pricing, everything down below in the description, after you finish watching this video, you definitely wanna check them out. It's well, well worth it. And honestly, they make these videos possible. So huge thank you to them. So speaking of which, let's look at extra virgin olive oil for a second. We know that olive oil is good. We've heard it time and time again, okay? We see it in all the major publications. But the British Medical Journal published something super, super cool. Okay, they found that subjects that went uh, on just an increase of extra virgin olive oil for like 12 weeks had this tremendous increase in HDL's ability to uh, help with what's called the cholesterol reflux. Pretty complicated thing, but basically what that means is it helps cholesterol or HDL's ability to scavenge additional uh, bad cholesterols and things like that. So it improved the function of the cholesterol. Now also it improves total cholesterol count, but the point is it's actually potentially giving you more of the kind of cholesterol you want for heart health. Okay, now we jump over to another study that took a look at the Mediterranean diet. And this is what's really cool. Okay, they took a look at a regular low-fat diet, okay? Low-fat diet with lots of fruit that was supposed to be high in antioxidants and super good for you because it's super high in fruit, right? Because everybody just, if you're eating fruit, you're automatically healthy, right? Okay, well, this study takes it a little further. They say, okay, we got this low-fat, high-fruit group. Let's take a look at like a Mediterranean group that's still eating moderately low-fat, except they're having lots of nuts and they're having lots of olive oil. And then they had one group that ate similarly, but they had extra olive oil. You want to guess which one came out the best? They found that the Mediterranean groups both trumped the low-fat group, but the group that had a little bit more olive oil too really did well. Okay, so they really did well in terms of the HDL's ability to scavenge. Again, I talk about this because at the end of the day, if you do want to check out Thrive Market down below too, I have like all the healthy nuts, the olive oils, all those things in a category. But anyhow, I digress. Now let's talk avocados for a second. I did a video before that talked about how, why I eat one avocado per day, and there's lots of reasons. It's pretty easy to eat an avocado per day. Put it on your eggs, make some guacamole. You don't even have to do keto, whatever. Just eat your avocado. And now one that you're really gonna dig, coffee. Yes, your coffee is going to improve the ability of your HDL to do its job. Okay, so this study published in Circulation Research took a look at caffeic acid and ferulic acid, which are the main phenolic compounds in coffee. You're seeing where I'm going with this, coffee is your friend when it comes to HDL. So they found that it improved, just consuming coffee, improved the ability of HDL to, again, modulate that cholesterol efflux out of specific macrophages. Complicated terminology, which again, means it increased the right kind of HDL that increased the ability to scavenge the wrong kinds of things that shouldn't be in our bloodstream when it comes down to lipids. It's nerdy, it's weird, but at the end of the day, it is your health, okay? So all the things that I talked about, all the analogies, all this stuff may sound like just weird nerd science, but if you are truly an advocate for your health, this stuff's important to you. And I encourage you to watch this video again, check it out and really understand what I'm saying because it will prove to you that not all cholesterols and not all fats are created equal. And again, if you're digging the content that I'm creating, I highly recommend you hit that little red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications. Okay, what that's gonna do, it's gonna allow you to always see my videos whenever I post them, which is just about daily these days. But additionally, it's gonna make it so that if whenever I do like a live broadcast, you can be a part of it. Your opportunity to ask questions, your opportunity to have a chance to have your question answered live. It's something you don't wanna miss and something you're only gonna see if you turn on notifications. So please do, hit the red subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and make sure you're diving into my channel full bore to better yourself. See you soon.